this is either gonna work or it's gonna scare the you know what out of my sheep. I'll film their reaction. Yeah. Which is a good uh, a good sign that she's got mastitis. <laughs> No, 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 no. This has not been fun. Not even a little. Good morning, Monday morning. I'm a bit cold. <laughs> It's not cold outside. I thought I would start my day out in the office. I have to redo a feed sheet. I've been talking to my vet, and if you recall in my last lambing group, well, basically the last year and a half, I've been having issues with preg tox ewes. We've kind of traced it back to our flush program and any of the ewes that are already too overconditioned or too large. I talked to my vet about a week ago, and I said, should I start to actually take out some of that energy of that flush ration now that we're on the end of this breeding period. Typically what we do is leave them on flush. I put them on flush two weeks before they start breeding. They're on flush the whole breeding period, so that typically is about 21 days. And then I actually leave them on the flush program for another four weeks, so a month after, for that early embryonic development and placenta development. So we're doing really good things for the babies which is what we, that was our goal. But in doing so, we're also just creating this really large you. I can't sacrifice one for the other. So talk to my vet. And I think for this group, what we're gonna do is we're not really gonna take them right off the flush program. I'm gonna take that extra dry corn out of the ration. They have corn silage. So he said, that's one step. At least that's doing something. We're just making a little bit of a, a little bit of an adjustment. We don't want to do stuff too drastic with feed. I also decided today I would change my feed ration uh, because we've been in the fields and field work always correlates with Sandy running out of groceries for her family. So we depend a lot on fast food and I'm feeling the effects of fast food. So this morning I thought I would switch it up and drink a smoothie. Well, smoothies make me really cold. Feeling very green. I'm coming. I'm, oh, I forgot my feed sheets. Darn it. So as we take care of that little piece of business, something else came in the mail today and I'm very excited. It's for the other problem I'm having in my barn. This is either gonna work or it's gonna scare the you know what out of my sheep. I got like a bird prey scary thing. So I'm gonna investigate this. Oh, hello. Hi. Goodbye. Bye. Alrighty, see if this works. Yep. I'll film their reaction. Yeah. Nothing. <laughs> 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 Not even phased. I still hear a lot of birds. <laughs> did you finish? Can you show me? Show me what you did. There we go. Everything is filled in, all the cracks are filled. Now, Mark and I did talk about actually using the wool for insulation in here. Um, his argument to me was that these wool insulation companies actually make them into bats. So he's like, if we just shove wool in the wall, it's just gonna, it's gonna, gravity's gonna push it down. So um, we decided just, I want it done. I don't want to waste a bunch of time. All oh, these birds are annoying too. And I only have a few rainy days here and there. So I just uh, took advantage of having Mark today, Mark and Jess. We just got this kit from Home Depot. It's just like a 
spray insulation kit. The goal was to use our wood that we have cut up across the road, uh, but we need more, we need some nicer days to cut it, and every nice day we're actually working the field. So if that doesn't happen, then we'll just put plywood on here, but uh, that was the, that's kind of the goal is to use that, because I think it would be pretty cozy. Good morning you guys. I ran to town this morning to grab some, I think Mark calls this roofing, roof, roofing felt. We are going to use our wood that we've been cutting across the road from our uh, fallen down trees or dead standing trees and because Mark got a sawmill, uh, just rough cut pieces and uh, frame in that office with that. So there's going to be spaces in between that because real life like it's pretty rough cut. Uh, so what he proposed to do, he said put this put this over top of that uh, foam insulation that we did yesterday. And then when there's cracks, all you'll see is like the black in between. Um, you won't see that that uh, beige -y kind of foam insulation. I'm gonna hopefully do that after chores this afternoon. I'm gonna do that. On many requests from you guys and from Instagram, uh, I've done some researching online about like bird predatory services. I don't know what happens. I'm gonna hopefully find out today. Hopefully they'll get back to me and this bird war will will finally get figured out. But it is just ridiculous. What's going on here, boys? So I'm in the middle of feeding and I noticed a ewe was like not coming up to eat. Her ears are droopy and I noticed the one side of her udder looked a little pink and a little swollen. Uh, so my guess, I'm going to grab, I have some antibiotic and I'm going to grab my hook and just grab her and have a feel on that udder to see if it's hard. It looks hard. Uh, it's probably warm which is a good uh, a good sign that she's got mastitis. Um, so I just want to nip this in the bud today. I can see her right now. So she's, she's just looking really lethargic and depressed. So the quicker you can get on mastitis and a U, uh, the better. If you wait even a day too long, I find with a sheep, they wait so long before you see it that quite often it can be too late by the time you treat them. So I saw her, this is the first I fed yesterday, didn't see her, and uh, today I just noticed she looks kind of depressed. She's right there. A you should look like this when you're eating. They should all be up at the bar. It's really never a good sign when you can catch a you and not have to use your crook. So I didn't even have to use it. I just kind of caught her and uh, administered the antibiotic. So anyway, we're going to keep an eye on her.
gewesen. This part's not perfect. We got that backwards, but that's okay. We're not gonna look at that wall. So I just have to ask Mark if we're doing the ceiling or not bothering. I'm imagining we have to. So yeah. So this is just so when we put the wood on, the spaces are black. You can't see the black. We done. Good morning, you guys. I just want to check on that you with the mastitis from yesterday. I also gave her a painkiller because uh, the thing with thing with anything with a sheep, really, if they have an infection, the infection is going to get them down. But part of the part of the healing is to get them feeling better enough to get them eating and drinking again. Once that happens, they can really start to fight off whatever is ailing them. Oh, she's standing in the corner. Ears still droopy. Udder's a little pinker today. Likely she's not letting her lambs drink, so she looks, looks full. Oh, she's chewing her cud. That's good. That's amazing. Hi, Mama. Hi, here. I think that's her. Yep, that's her. She's looking a little better. She's chewing her cud. That is a really good sign. Good stuff. She's just coming up to eat. Just fed them. So this is a good sign. Come on, Mama. Come on, Mama. See how when they're sick or weak, they just get, they keep getting pushed away. Oh, awesome. Good girl. There you go. Well, it is once again way day, way day Wednesday. So I am going to be moving all these guys over to this side. We're gonna run them through the handling system, take a wait. Uh, I will set my newly fastened gate across and have anything 105 pounds or over just in this little pen. And then hopefully this side, this side will be empty. This side will be empty enough that I can put everybody together on that side. And then I'm hoping Thursday or Friday, maybe Friday, I can actually clean this side, finally get the spring cleaning started in this barn. Because eventually those lambs across the road uh, need to be and put in here. All right, we're locked and loaded. Let's see what these guys are doing. No, 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 no. Why do you turn right at the last minute? That's it. There you go. Finished. We have. Uh, looks like we have 19 lambs ready to go. Very uniform sizes, I'd say. I did keep one that was 104 pounds. I usually don't do that, but I'll just give you the quick stats. Uh, so yeah, 19 lambs. Minimum weight was 104 pounds. Max was 115. For an average weight of 108. 108 is about normal. And then by the time, so I'll take them later today. They'll get sold tomorrow morning. And likely they'll be sitting in that 102. Uh, pounds somewhere in there. Lots of room over there now for that group. This this pen will be completely empty after tonight, which is really good. And then I'll be able to clean that side out. Hopefully this week, if not this week, maybe this weekend or early next week. Just depends on the weather and the rain because we do have to stockpile this manure. Okay, we are all set up. We're gonna we're gonna see if this job will go okay through this uh, e easy clamp system. I'm not gonna use the clamp at all. Everything's gonna be kept like wide open because I do have rams uh, and fully fleeced ewes going through this system. So I'm hoping they will just run through. I'm gonna do all the sorting here at the Vino sort gate. 
So rams will go kind of back over and the, ewe lamb, uh, the ewes will just come straight forward. So we're gonna start with the ewe lamb pen first. I do keep them separate from the mature ewes. Uh, I just like them to have their own feed. The big, uh, older, mature mamas will tend to bully a younger ewe, so I, I just always keep them together till they've had their first lamb. This ewe pen here, the ewes in there, and then the ewes in the back corner, uh, they will all get reunited and put back together. I just wanted them bred to different daddies, so that's why they're all kind of separate. So they're all gonna be, hopefully this will go okay. Jess is on standby across the road. They're actually milling my wood for my office right now. So uh, if I need her, I just have to call her, but I'm gonna see if this will go okay uh, with just me. I'm hoping it will. Come on, a little further. Okay, we'll see if this works. Get him up here anyway. Okay. This has not been fun. Not even a little. Okay, the second group was amazing and I wish I had the camera on, but I was so upset from the first group. So far, it looks like just the Suffolk boys are the ones causing the biggest issue. They are too big for me to try to push in and they would not go. Uh, I can't take it down and set it back up just for one breed. So the Ritos went through tickety-boo. They are the smaller ones though. So now I'm gonna work on the, uh, the older Ritos. The Ilda France went through no problem and the Steel, Steel Rams went through no problem, but those Suffolk Rams are bullheaded and if they don't want to go, they will not go. Anyway, I'm going to move these guys over there and then I'm going to start taking, uh, taking out that last pen. Wish me luck.
Okay, that job is done. Everybody is back where they should be. Boys are in this pen, you lambs in this pen in the front, and the mature ewes are right behind them in the back. So I just have to redo a feed sheet for tomorrow. I am a little concerned on how much paint I see still on some of these ewes. If you remember, I do a reverse marking harness, so I paint the ewe, and then I hope the rams will rub it off. Now, I've seen a fully marked ewe before, and she sometimes scans pregnant, so I don't really use them as a full, you know, it's not, it's not being ultrasounded, that's why I get Rebecca. The paint is just an observation, it's just for me, but I'm nervous. They did good last year, so we'll see. I'm gonna have to really go through these rams in the next little bit. I have a set of real young rams, like all my Ritos, half my Ritos, Ritos are fairly young, my steel rams are young, but my Suffolk rams are getting a bit older. My original Rito Rams are getting a bit older, and uh, my Ile de France Rams are getting a bit older. So uh, those Suffix were awful today. They're too big for me. So I'm not sure if they're just so used to the old system. And, and quite honestly, the last time I ran them through, when I was putting, putting them in these pens with my old system, they were starting to balk then too. Uh, they're just really pushing their weight around. And I can't, I can't have that because I'm doing a lot of these jobs by myself if I get injured, or like if they stop traffic, I'm, I, it's so frustrating because then everyone else follows what they do. So if one ram stops, then the, the group behind them is like, oh, why did he stop? And then they all want to stop. Probably should be replaced anyhow, but I was hoping, I was hoping to get a little more out of them. Uh, but other than that, it's, that's just management. It's just things that the system worked really well. I think that's it for now. I'm gonna clean up and then I have to uh, load up some market lambs in the trailer. Someone hook it up for me? I don't think so. Ah, uh, no. Hard at it? Yeah. Show the people my boards. Good from far, far from good. Good from far, far from good? These are gonna be my walls. A little wavy. It's got lots of character. Well, it's not insecure about its boards. It's got character like. Me. I have successfully dropped off my market lambs at the barn. Uh, a lot of goats in there today, so I don't know if there's a big goat sale tomorrow. Anyways, uh, I also had a really good talk with my vet on the way home. Uh, I am actually seriously considering looking at some new rams. So I wanted to just talk to him about breeds and what I should be looking for. I think I'm leaning towards some Dorset. Uh, just for some more successful, uh, just bringing in a little more of that uh, out of season breeding again. I think I think I just need to um, make sure that's still a pretty good trait in my flock. Uh, the other thing I wanted to just mention to you guys is I have a couple things that are getting launched on the website, hopefully tonight, maybe tomorrow. Um, for Mother's Day and I was hoping to have one more thing, but it's not gonna be ready. So um, Anyways, we are working on some pretty fun stuff. I'm hoping to have another video uh, But it'll probably come out on Mother's Day, but if I don't see you guys have a really wonderful Mother's Day spoil your mom It's 530. I'm gonna just dump the trailer and call it a night and we'll see you guys tomorrow. Take care